I've filmed many safaris. Many animals have been shot from, from the back of a vehicle. Animals walking slowly in front, they'll whistle to make the animal stop, look at you, and then they shoot the thing. Load, load, load. Shoot him again, shoot him again, shoot him again. Shoot him again! Go forward, go forward, go forward, go forward. Go forward, go forward. Okay, stop. And then it's up to me as a cameraman to try and make the whole safari look authentic. Yeah, watch, stop, stop, stop. You know, I've got to cut out the vehicle, make sure that people yeah, who are going to watch the video don't see these sort of things going on. Jeez, we were lucky. Huh? You. We were so lucky to see that line. He's a fantastic yeah, yeah. I couldn't believe it when you said it. I and then he came it. right out like <laughs> 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 Fantastic! Oh shit, that bull's pulse is dropping. <laughs> Fantastic shot, your first shot was perfect. Was good? Yeah, good. Oh, why didn't he go down then? No, no that's, that's he, normal. He, he that's rolled normal. over. They, they, they're so bloody tough, these things. Hey, you. I'm sorry, but I wanted you. You, that's a lovely line. That's a line, my boy. That is a line. Oh, God almighty. God almighty. Hey you, I kiss you. <laughs> so from a cameraman's point of view, very disappointing to see what's been going on um, in South Africa. My name's Derek Gobbett. Um, I've been involved with wildlife for a long time now. Probably the, uh, the thing that made me realize um, why I needed to tell a, this kind of a story um, was in about 2012, it was in 2012, I was asked to film a lion hunt. It was my first lion hunt in South Africa. Typically, if it was a free range lion, you'd need at least 14 days to 21 days to hunt this animal. Um, and here I am with 10 guys, they're gonna shoot 10 lions in a week. And with one cameraman and they wanted every single one filmed, how's that possible? Basically, it's canned lion hunting. The concession is, is owned by De Klerk Safaris, and the, the outfitter that I was with was Stormberg Elangeni Safaris. They knew it was a canned hunt. They had told me that they had never done a canned lion hunt before, but basically everyone else was doing it, so why don't they get in on it? They also said that so long as they're doing it legally, in other words, how it has been legislated, then there's no reason for them not to do it. The first group of lionesses arrived. I think they came from Bloemfontein. They were transported into the, uh, the hunting enclosure the day before the hunt took place. The guy who runs the operation, a guy called Hans, invited us to, to come and view the releasing of the animals, which kind of surprised me. It's kind of brazen, if you ask me, that um, they, that someone would be quite happy to, to let us see what's going on. Basically eight lionesses were released um, literally the day before the clients arrived. In fact, four were released as the aeroplane was landing um, just down the road. Unfortunately, I couldn't get any footage of this. Um, it's not the sort of thing that uh, they would have taken kindly to having a camera filming the release of these animals. The morning of the hunt, bright and early start. Today we're, uh, we're going to pursue lionesses and uh, I think the odds are with us. So we set off, two clients with two professional hunters. I'm not sure that they knew what they were doing. I think that one or two of them weren't even licensed for that particular area. To my knowledge there was no government official on the safari with me. It's not a huge area that, of land that you are, are hunting in. It's fenced in and it's been cut into pieces. So there are cut lines through the bush. So you've got blocks of bush throughout this, this area. 
very easy to find these lines. All you do, you drive along, you find where the line is, or the line has crossed a road, so you know, okay, it's in this block. You go around that block, you'll then be able to see if it's crossed through and into another block. This isn't exactly tracking in my book. Okay, we put the size of yeah. it. And it's inevitable. You eventually find the animal up a tree where it's trying to take refuge. Literally just above us. And again, you can see in the footage, it's up in a tree. We'd walked literally underneath the animal. It never pounced on us. It's not a wild lion. It's just cowering in a tree. It just wants to get away. And here we have people paying thousands of dollars for this experience. He's dead, he's dead. I got it, I got another shot. Take it. In the uh, shoulder. On. Take it. Take it. Okay. God. Holy fuck, we just walked past that tree. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck. I looked up. That's a bad fuck, mate. One lioness that we uh, that we we tracked down was so terrified that it actually climbed into a warthog hole. There was mass panic with the professional hunters and the and the client. Some of the footage that I've made available will show this. Just leave him for me. Eventually this poor animal is shot um, and dragged out of the hole. Um, not something that uh, anyone could really be proud of in my book. You know, you're shooting an animal, a lioness, in a hole. Another one was shot absolutely exhausted up against this, this old fence. Doesn't make for great footage. Certainly doesn't make it easy to, to make the safari look authentic. The difference between the lioness and the lion is that um, most people wouldn't know this, but it's actually a lot easier. The male lions are big and fat. They're not moving anywhere. They're so used to humans. <laughs> we stalked this big lion all this morning and uh, he made a standoff right here in the bush on us. And it was the most exciting thing I've ever done as far as hunting goes. We had shot that first line probably within half an hour. You know, the PHs were starting to get a little bit um, concerned now because it's so easy. You know, gosh, you know, you can't just walk into the bush and there's your lion. You know, this guy's expecting, man, I'm hunting a lion. Surely there's a little bit more to it. The second of the lions, they decided that they didn't want to shoot this one so quickly because there were still a couple of days on the hunt. You know, all of a sudden, what do, they, what do they do? So we drove around, we drove around, we drove around for the, the whole afternoon with the client and decided, look, we can't find it, so we'll, we'll start again in the morning, you know, we'll, we'll be fresh and we'll, we'll track this thing down in the morning. Which we did. Big fucking cat, huh? Holy shit, he's big. What I find quite disturbing um, sometimes with with these these situations where it's taken a lot of shots to to take the animal down, 
can't move. It's probably got about five or six bullet, bullet holes in it. It's mortally wounded. And the animal will be lying there suffering. I think still breathing, right? Yeah. I find it very difficult to film this and, and watch this and hear this with the professional hunter and his clients standing around <laughs> talking about the hunt. Surely one more bullet um, would put the animal out of its misery. Um, and I can never understand that, you know, why not? Why not take one more shot? Um, most Americans love shooting, you know, one more shot isn't, it's, it's not a waste. We snuck around him, he was behind a bush, it was the scariest thing ever. Yeah, I thought he was coming out, but we got him, we shot him. Right from the start, it's told to the, the guys, you know, it's very dangerous. Uh, these are wild animals, it's, it's very scary, you know, and, and, and this is the way it's going to be. And of course the clients, they've never been on one of these before, they take it all in. Beautiful lion, number two. <laughs> Geez, that lion just happened to walk out in front of us. Incredible. You got so lucky and wow, that was such an amazing shot you placed on it. Beautiful cat. All right. Wow. Oh Slaps on the back. Right. You're such a hero. Look at what you've done. You've got your, 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 your king of the jungle. Meanwhile, it's all just a lie. And on the safari, I had to do 10 of those. This is my first time in Africa and uh, this is something I've been dreaming ever since I was a kid growing up in a concrete city where there was no animals like that and uh, I guess it's a dream come true.